here we are with the palette making the palettes a bit of fun really it's included as just a little fun accessory for dolly if you have already had the uh french chic costume that has the beret wouldn't it be fun to make another beret actually um make it in a in a purple or a teal something that goes with what we've been uh, working with today so that could be quite fun so what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the palette now do not cut out the center circle i'll show you for why in just a sec please note i have swapped to my paper scissors for once i am a good crafter right so we'll keep our instructions and if you go ahead and cut out all of the paint spots that'd be great so what we're going to do is look how much extra felt we've got fantastic i love a bit of spare felt so what i want you to do is pop some pins in double layer of felt so we've doubled up the layer just to give it a bit more stability for uh madame dolly l'artiste pop that in right what we're going to do is we're going to cut it out i usually start quite roughly actually and then come in on my shape i'm going to show you a few little tips with felt it's lovely to work with i love it and the reason we've done it with felt is so that it can't really get damaged it's pliable it's malleable it's nice and soft uh, it's not going to get damaged at all so now what we're going to do is just take those pins out and remove the pattern remember where this circle is because what we're going to do is pin those back together and what i'd like you to do is stitch around the outside to join these two together so here i go quite close to the edge the beauty of this is after you've stitched it you can in fact trim the felt close up to the edge of your sewing line to neaten it so if your sewing is not that brilliant you can uh, hide a myriad of personalizations within the felt by giving it a little trim so there we are we've gone all the way around the outside Move the machine back there we go so you'll see what i mean by this isn't completely um looking very nice so just taking my scissors i can neaten that up take all your threads away and you can see anywhere that's a little bit uneven you can just with your scissors have a little neaten up so for all intents and purposes it will look like you're an absolutely super sewer and you've got the width the same all the way around but actually you've cheated a little bit and that's fine and i won't tell anybody because i do it all the time <laughs> similar technique to this can be found doing the angel wings in the nativity it's exactly the same way now with this circle let's pop the pattern back on what we're going to do is we're going to remove the circle of the pattern. Just fold it over, give it a snip, pop your scissors in. And what I want you to do is take it uh, on the outside of the line. There's a good reason for this. Just take that out of there. Okay. Right, now what we're going to do is position that back on the pattern. This time, we're actually gonna sew with the pattern in the material. So, you might need quite a few pins depending on uh, how confident you are. The more pins, the less it will move. The less it moves, the more accurate you can be. And we're really gonna take this slow. We're only gonna take it a couple of stitches at a time. But what we're gonna do, is we're going to sew around this hole. Don't worry about getting on the paper because we're going to take the paper out afterwards. So just positioning that black line of the pattern in there. Follow the inside of the circle. I find I get about four or five stitches before I need to have a bit of a turn. 
and I'll turn again. As I say, don't worry if you go into the paper. Now the reason we're sewing this is so that we can remove the circle of felt in the middle rather than trying to delicately sew the perimeter where after we've cut it out. You can do either way, but here's just a little a little tip, a little cheat. Right, so there we go. Take those pins out. Have I caught the paper? No, I haven't. But there you can see we've sewn that little round all there. Now, tidy up those, just like so. My scissors aren't hugely sharp at the moment. And that's what we have. So now we're gonna take out that little piece of felt. If you have some very, very tiny scissors, I don't know where mine are just right now, um, but embroidery scissors work really well, as will a quick unpick. Do I have one of those? No, I don't use a quick unpick. Does she heck all the time, 30 million times a day. Right, I am literally just going to demonstrate. These are bigger scissors, so I'm not going to be able to be as accurate. But what you want to do is you just want to cut towards the stitch line and then take out Yeah, these scissors are far too big to be doing this, but bear with me. You'll do yours much neater. I think the tip on mine are actually slightly blunt. Might be a trip to uh, craftacalia.co.uk to buy myself some new ones. I could treat myself. Right, so essentially, that's Dolly's little handle. And the sharper your scissors, the, the less of these little bobbly bits you'll get. Because obviously I have used my blunt ones. Actually, that's not bad. I'm proud of that. Right, so now you've cut out your coloured felty squiggly bits. And actually, if you were really boring like me, you could just you could just freehand some wibbly wobbly paint bits. Depending on what you've got time for, or propensity for, or patience for. And all we're going to do is we're just going to spot those on there. And I, um, in the pattern, I've asked you to put the spots on first. Uh, but when I actually did mine a second time, I realised that it was really nice to have this little quilted effect of the three layers of felt. So all you need to do, once you've got your little paint splats, is... Whoops! Right on the very edge. And again, you can you can chain stitch this on, you can blanket stitch it on, you can do it in front of the telly. You don't have to use the machine. Now, these if you're giving this to a child, it's really important that they're they're properly secured down these. We've gone way off, I'll have to unpick those later. It's very important that these are secured down. If you wanted to pop a little piece of stuffing under them, you could. That would make them a bit more raised, give them a bit more dimension. But apart from my little faux pas where I went off there, pretty good. So you're just going to sew all those colours on to this mock white plastic artist palette and you can see how that colour builds up quite quickly. You can put as many on as you like, you can do random shapes, you know just imagine how paint comes out of a tube and you're, and you're there really. I think Dolly would make um, a lot of mess actually painting. I've got a small easel that I've used for a bit of a laugh on the photography of her and um, just imagining what a state she would get into if she was a real painter. Um, goodness knows. Absolutely goodness knows. And then we'll have a little blob of green. 
So the more organic you make the shapes, the better it looks. So once you've stitched those back on, your palette's ready, and then we can get Dolly dressed. Thank you. 